flames in your eyes You've got wonder working power pouring out of your side Check the tube all the way through the grave is empty inside Ain't no other pull the greatest miracle of all Jesus, who he is. Come on, let's just move into a time of worship together. Let's not miss this moment to give him all glory, all honor, and all praise. Let's sing to our King today. Jesus.
wear that crown Cause there's nobody Come on, sing that out No enemy could hold you down
worship. Tell him one more time. You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. Every voice, come on, let's sing it out together. Let's lift our hands to heaven. Tell him he's worthy of it all. He deserves all the glory. He's worthy of it all. Not just because he's the lamb that was slain, but three days later, he stepped out again from that grave. I'm here to celebrate together with you this morning, church. He is no longer in that grave, but he has risen from the dead. Can we give Jesus, the King of kings, the praise, the glory he deserves? Come on. Come on, we came to celebrate a risen king today. And we are so glad you're here to worship together with us. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, remembering what he's done and celebrating who he is today. We've been praying for you all week. We want you to know that. That you will have an encounter with the risen king today. Connect with the power that he has for you and I. And if this is the first time you're with us here at Cedar Reach, let me just tell you, we are so honored that you came to worship with us today. And we've been praying especially for you, that you will feel like family today, that you feel right at home here. So welcome to City Reach Church. You may be seated. Hey, City Reach Church. Thanks for joining us. I'm Raven, and I serve on the Dream Team, the backbone of City Reach that keeps the vision moving forward. If it's your first time, welcome. Make sure to check out the Connect Center in the lobby or the Connect page of our website. We'd love to connect with you and give you some information about your next steps. The Next Steps class is designed to help you take your faith to deeper levels and truly discover what it means to know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. Make sure to download the City Reach Church app on your phone and take notes along with us. Now, let's get ready for the word. They came out, laying down their palm branches on the ground to worship and honor the King of Kings, the Messiah, and the very crowd that was just celebrating Jesus are now shouting at the top of their lungs, crucify. He was mocked, laughed at, spit upon. They made a crown of thorns and dug it deep into his skull. The whips would tear the flesh from his bone. They drove nine inch nails through his hands and his feet. He was devoted with everything he had inside of him to make the greatest exchange that the world has ever seen. But as he laid in that tomb for three days, the spirit began to move. And God gave his command, fill him with life again. The stone was rolled away. Jesus is resurrected and living forevermore. Yeah, come on, let's celebrate Jesus. It's Resurrection Sunday. Oh, so good to see you. Thank you for joining this service. I could tell you that those of you that have made room by switching out from the services that you typically go through, it has been absolutely worth it. Every service has been filled over capacity, and we have won more souls already this Easter weekend by far than we have ever seen in the history of our church. And so I just want to thank you for choosing this service. This is the last one. Mike just said to me, last set, best set. The team asked me, should we have a recording ready from one of the other services to play in the seventh service of the weekend? And I said, you should, but you won't have to use it because God's grace is upon this. I thank God for his grace upon my voice. It has just gotten stronger and stronger as each service goes instead of the opposite direction. So I came today to tell you that God's here to give you his best, and I'm here to give you my best. Are you all ready for that? So if you got your Bible with you, 
or a smart device you're looking at it on. If you got nothing at all, you can use your hand, and I encourage you to bring something next week. But whatever you got, let's lift it up to the Lord, and let's ask his blessing upon this time of his word. Just say, Father God, thank you for your word. Your word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. Your word changes me from the inside out. I am ready to receive, willing to obey your holy word. In Jesus' name, amen. Last week on Palm Sunday, as it is the preparation Sunday going into the holy week leading up to today, we took a dive, a deep dive into the study of John the Baptist's life as he was the one that God called to prepare the way for Jesus. Not only did God call him to do it, choose him to do it, create him to do it, but he actually prophesied about John 700 and 400 years ago before, G, or before John was ever born, he had given these prophecies about the one that would come to prepare the way for Jesus. Then his parents were selected, and they were even selected as they were later on in life, past baby-making ages. So it was a miracle on top of a miracle on top of a miracle that John would come forth, and God did some amazing things through John as he prepared the way of Jesus, but then the crowd starts really getting into John, like, John, man, are you Elijah? Are you, like, who are you? You are a mighty man of God. And here's what John had to say in response to that. It's actually a prophecy of Jesus. He said in Matthew 3.11, I baptize with water those who repent of their sins and turn to God. But he who is coming after me is greater than I am. So much greater that I am not even worthy to carry his sandals. And he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He's teaching us and prophesying to each and every one that was even listening in those days that there is one coming that is so much greater than I am that I can't even carry his filthy, sweaty sandals. That's how great he is. What separates Jesus from the rest? Look what Jesus said even himself as he prophesies about the end of his life coming. In Mark 8, 31, he's teaching his people that it was necessary. Can you say necessary? That it was necessary for the Son of Man to, look at this, suffer, be rejected, and then be killed. How in the world would it be necessary for the Son of Man, the Son of God, the King of Kings, how could it be necessary for him to suffer, be rejected, and then be murdered? And we are the necessary. He did it with us in mind that anyone that would be born from that moment on would now be just one word away from redemption, one word away, one belief away from salvation. But then he says, the last part of it, but he will also rise after three days. We read in Luke chapter 24, the resurrection story, that even after this prophecy and his disciples hearing the words of Jesus himself over and over again, letting them know that he will destroy the temple in three days, he will rebuild it. He was speaking of his physical temple, his physical body would be destroyed, but then rebuilt in three days, and all of this was still a mystery to them. But in Luke 1, it says, early on that Sunday morning, as the women came with spices they prepared for the body of Jesus. When they arrived at the tomb of Jesus, the stone had been rolled away. And as they looked inside, they found an empty tomb with nothing but grave clothes on the inside of it. Because he is risen. But they couldn't figure it out. They were perplexed, the Bible says. And as they went to leave that tomb, two angels appeared to them and said, Why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is not here, for he is risen forevermore, just as he promised he would do. That's what we've come to celebrate today, is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
We thank God for Good Friday. We thank God for what it represents. There's such a reverence with it. When we know all that Jesus went through, when we know the suffering and the rejection, the abuse, the abandonment, the murder itself, we know how heavy it must have been. It was so heavy on him. The Bible says that he began to sweat blood. There's a scientific medical term for that, that when somebody is under the most possible anxiety and stress they can possibly humanly bear, they will begin to produce blood through their sweat pores. He was in so much anguish, tormented, mocked, ridiculed, spit upon, beard ripped from his face, flesh tore from his bones, crown of thorn pressed into his head, forced to carry that cross, then be hoisted up in mockery and display for all of humanity. Good Friday is only Good Friday because Sunday was coming. If Jesus' story had ended on Friday, how would he be different from anyone else that has been a martyr for their cause, that has given their life for their cause? But Jesus stands alone in this. No other God, no false God, no one can claim what Jesus can claim. What we know, change history, change how we, how we tell time, how we look at a calendar, how we do everything in this life. It all filters through Resurrection Sunday. And this is what we're here to celebrate today, amen? amen? Jesus will go on to say in John chapter 11 that I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me. You see, religion wants you to think that it's a bunch of rules and regulations. That's man-made. That's not from God. The enemy wants to make you to think that you're not good enough, you're unworthy, that you've done too much, you've gone too far. But Jesus says, whoever believes in me, though they die, yet shall they live. What a promise. His apostles and his disciples are remembering this as the Holy Spirit comes on the day of Pentecost and fills them with the power of God. And Peter steps out, the one who denied him three times, is now stepping out to preach the truth about Jesus. And he says, yeah, you murdered him. All of you are responsible. The whole city gathered the same ones who crucified him are now gathered around from this mighty rushing tornado type of wind that came through the city that got all their attention when the power of the Holy Spirit fell. He said, you might have murdered him, but in Acts 2.24, God raised him up, ending the pains of death because it was impossible for him to be held by death. Death cannot hold the king of kings. Death cannot hold the son of God. Death cannot hold the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. Death cannot hold the first, the last, and all that will be. Death cannot hold the living word of God. Death could not hold him. That grave could not hold him. And this is why Jesus would later on say in Revelation chapter 1, I am the living one. Yes, I died. But look, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and hell. What does that mean? Every time you see the word keys in the Bible, it always represents authority. You see, you have keys to a vehicle you brought here today. That represents you have authority to drive that vehicle. If you don't believe me, if you're the one driving the Ram TRX, you want to be generous and hand those keys to me, I will show you what authority looks like when I rip that sucker up all the way down the highway. You have keys to your home. You have authority. Parents. Your little ones don't have keys. They don't have authority yet. 
You have the authority of your home. The devil doesn't. The neighbors don't. Are you listening to me? You have authority. If you are in a position of leadership, management, or ownership of a company, you have keys to the building. Not everybody gets keys to every building that they work in. But if you have a key, that means you have authority there. And what Jesus is telling us is that he holds now all authority over death. And what that means is that after this life is over, he has the authority to give you life everlasting. That you don't have to face the second death, which is the next thing that he holds authority over, which is hell. He emptied hell, and he wants to plunder hell and populate heaven. Do you know that it is the perfect will of God that all would be saved? Even in John three sixteen, God so gave so that the whole world could be saved. So all of this is in, I don't believe one minute that God is sending anybody to hell. It wasn't created for humanity. It was created for Satan and the fallen angels. It's not God sending someone. And people say, how could a good God send people to such a terrible place? God's not sending them. Us refusing to believe sends ourselves to it. Because there's only two places after this. And the only way to get in for the everlasting and with the everlasting one is by simply believing. So what am I talking to you about today? That Jesus displayed resurrection power on Easter Sunday morning. He displayed a power the world has never seen or never knew of. That day changed everything. That resurrection power that came upon him. Think about the amount and the kind of power that it would take to come upon a man who had been rotting in a grave for three days in a hot tomb in the Middle East. And for him to walk out with no decay, no disease, completely whole and healed. The only thing left were the nail scars in his hands and the side, the wound in his side so that he could show his disciples, this is truly me. That resurrection power, would you agree with me that that resurrection power is pretty fantastic? Then this is the next thing I need you to see because Jesus wants you to see two things about that resurrection power. And the first one is that resurrection power is for you in this life. And that's number one. Jesus has given resurrection power to your life in this life that we live, not just the life to come. In Romans 8 verse 11, the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. Speaking to the believers. See, this message is for believers and non-believers. First point is if you already believe, then you need to awaken and understand that there is a resurrection power living vibrantly on the inside of you that has resurrected your spirit into life. And with that life, God is expecting that life to be poured out of you into this life, into this world, into other people's lives to make a difference. It is by, look at this now, and just as God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, he will give life. To what? To your mortal bodies. That's this life. To your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living in you. I need you just to lean in spiritually to what I'm about to tell you. That same exact identical power that brought Jesus from death back to life after the third day that rolled the stone away and caused him to walk out, the resurrected Savior is living already on the inside of each and every believer, and it's just waiting on us to unleash it. You see, God is waiting on us. We're not waiting on him. The church has taught it wrong for too long. That God is, God is waiting, or we are waiting on God. Like, why isn't God moving like he used to move? Why aren't we seeing the miracles like we did in the Bible? How come we don't see miracles in America like we see in Africa and Asia and, and South America? Why are we not seeing this? 
And the devil is doing his best to get you to think you're a have not, will not, cannot be. Oh, you've done too much, you've gone too far. That's one of the traps of the enemy is to convince you that you're unworthy, you're unqualified to be able to be such a vessel for God. But God is no respecter of person. If God can do it through them, God can do it through us. Why are we seeing, people ask me all the time when we go to Africa and we see all the miracles and even our team that goes participates in God doing miracles through them. And the question is, is why is it happening? Well, it is. Come to one of our breakthrough services and you'll see it. But why is it happening more widespread in America? Well, the first is I believe the enemy has worked really well in the Western culture to get us to stop trusting in the source. And the second play of that is to get us invested too much into the cares of this world. You see, when we go to these third world countries, they don't have anything. And when you preach Jesus to them and Jesus comes alive in their heart, they believe whatever the Bible says right there forward. The faith is so pure. And the enemy is lulling us to sleep. Oh, got to have the next house, got to have the next car, got to feel, got to feel this emptiness, this void I have. And that void really is that resurrection power wanting to explode through you, wanting your life to count, for you to make a difference in the lives of others while you're here on this earth. Listen to me, believers. I've came today to stir your faith. I pray today that the Holy Spirit would ignite a fire within your belly that cannot be quenched. I pray today that your mind would be open, that you would have eyes to see and ears to hear what God has to say about your life. Whenever I was preparing for this over the past Weeks and every time I would come to the scripture, I would, I would fall on my knees and just begin to repent to God. God, forgive me. I know that I'm not allowing you to do everything that you would want to do through my life. I know that I'm restricting that. I'm holding it back. There's, there's doubts I have or there's confusion or busyness or too many things on my plate already or that sin that's so easily trips me. But God, I just want to be used at a higher level by you. God, I want to see the hospitals emptied with the sick being healed. I want to walk into funeral homes and stand up the dead, Lord. I want to see the book of Acts come alive in Austin, Texas and this surrounding region. I'm talking about God wanting to use us like he used Peter and, and, and John when they were coming upon the gate called Beautiful and the crippled beggar who had been there 40 years every day of his life begging for change and they told him silver and gold. Have we none? But what we do have, we give to you. Now in the name of Jesus Christ, stand up and be healed. And the man was instantaneously healed in a miracle and it brought Tens of thousands of people to say yes to Jesus because they all watched that man lay there for 40 years and now he's healed. I'm talking about using you like Peter was used when he walked into the city of Joppa and there was a godly woman named Tabitha who had passed away before her time and the Holy Spirit comes upon him and reminds him of the time that Jesus allowed him to come with him when he raised somebody from the dead and he sent now Peter into the house of Tabitha where he laid his body across her three times which I believe are the three days of death that Jesus faced and on the third time Tabitha was resurrected in an instantaneous moment. And again, thousands upon thousands come to Jesus. Why is our nation heading in the wrong direction? Why is it losing faith? Why is the church, not ours, but the big C church, dying on the vine? It's because we've disconnected from the branch. Who is Jesus? We need. We need. To awaken. Can you have nice cars? Of course you should. You should live in a nice house. God wants you to prosper even as your soul prospers. So God doesn't want you to have bad things. God wants you to have plenty of good things. But if the good things are your focus, then you're off. You see, when I put God as my focus, then he adds everything else to my life. Put first the kingdom of God and everything else 
will be added on to you. So I don't want to get, I want to give so that God will replenish even more. And ultimately, and I know it's busy, and I know life is crazy. Some of y'all got multiple kids. You got four kids and they're in five sports each. You got 20 different games to get to a week. Candace and Aaron just, Candace said to me, Dad, can I sign you up to, to be a football coach for Kings' flag football team? I'm like, how much time does that require? And she said, oh, only one day a week. There's one game a week. I was like, yeah, I could do one game for my grandson. I'll do that. I used to coach football, so I could, I could do that. Then I found out, yeah, there's one day a week for the game. Then there's one day a week for the practice. Then there's one day a week meeting with parents, and then there's one day a week meeting with the coaches for all the I'm like, this is a lot of days in the week that all of a sudden are taken up. And I only had one kid. I don't, I don't act like a hero parent. I thought it was pretty easy. But Candace and Aaron got four. And if you got more than one, you are a blessed human being. If you are even managing to keep them alive, you are a hero to me. I watched them try to balance their life with four kids, and my head is doing this the entire time. Like, I get to be grandpa. I love to be around my grandkids. I love them dearly, and I love to be around them for short periods of time. Like a three-round burst versus a machine gun life. But ultimately... Should you enjoy your kids? Should you give them the best? Yes. There is, no, there is no condemnation to any of that. That's actually encouraged by God is to give your family the best and put them first in your life right after God. But God is looking for first place in every area of our life. And when we begin to give him that and say, my life is yours, use it as you wish, I believe we'll begin to see the resurrection power work through our lives like we've never seen before. They call, they call Austin the unicorn city. It's the stepchild of Texas. Let's be the unicorn church, the stepchild of churches. In other words, what I'm saying to you is let's not do the normal, the religious thing. Show up, go home, feel better about ourselves. Let's show up, be filled up, go out, and change the world. Amen? Amen. The second thing that that resurrection power does is it's here for the life to come. So this is for the believer and the non-believer, but especially focused on those who have yet to believe. In 1 Peter chapter 1, 3 through 4, all praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by His great mercy. And remember what mercy means. It is the unmerited mercy forgiveness of God. In other words, you can't work for it, you can't earn it, can't say enough prayers for it, can't go in a confessional booth and get it, can't have the beads and the, you can't have, that doesn't get it. That's religion. All that gets it is you simply asking for it. You believing in your heart and asking Jesus and that is how we are born again. Because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. So we get our why with the what. You want to have that great mercy poured out on your life, every sin you've ever done, every mistake you've ever made, literally washed away, wiped out, cast as far as the east is from the west, plunged in the depths of the sea, remember no more, a fresh start, new beginning. You want that? Then you just got to say yes to Jesus. You got to believe. And now... We live with great expectation, and we have a priceless inheritance. There's no price on this inheritance, because this inheritance, it is kept in heaven for you. And I believe that inheritance first starts when someone says yes to Jesus. He writes your name in the Lamb's book of life. And when this world comes to an end, and one day it will, all humanity who has ever lived will stand at the throne of Jesus and be separated into two crowds. One crowd will be those whose names are found in that book. And the other crowd were those who refuse to believe and say yes to Jesus. And there's only two eternities 
awaiting both of those crowds. And the left one ain't real good. And Jesus is saying to us, I'm going to keep it there for you. Pure and undefiled. Not only that, but there are riches being stored up for you in heaven. And I don't believe that it's just gold and silver and big mansions. I know that stuff comes with it, but I don't think that's God's focus. I think some of these riches are going to be, you're going to meet the children you've lost here on this earth. The family members, the loved ones that have gone before you. You're going to get to heaven and you're going to be surprised to see some people there. You're going to be like, I had no idea. No, really. Like you got in? You're like, you're in, in. This isn't a trial run. They're going to be like, nah, I'm in, man. What about George? Nah, George, George didn't make it in. I don't even need to know. I'm just, I, I, I'm surprised you're in. You never know what comes out of someone's mouth right at the instant that they're leaving this life into the next. Let's not make judgments. That is, that is Jesus' job. He will make the final judgment over every soul. We believe the best and pray for all according to his will that they'll all be saved. See, I see all these inheritances, these, these pure and undefiled treasures being stored up for us in heaven that are beyond the reach of change and decay. They're not going nowhere, and they're doing nothing but getting better the entire time. And that's the promise of the resurrection power. Not only will it live in you while you are here on this earth, but it is the actual power that transcends you from this life into the next where your body will be given a body that is fit for glory, that you will receive your full inheritance in heaven. Amen? Come on, let's thank God for his word today. I'm going to ask just for a moment if we can bow our heads and close our eyes. I want the next moments to be very private and reverent for each and every one of you. And I want you to start to ask yourself these questions. And the first one is, why, why not believe? Does the enemy have your mind trapped with so much doubt? We can believe that man can create rockets to take us to outer space, but we can't believe that there is one greater creator that put all this together? Is our faith in ourself or what man makes, or is our faith in the one who made mankind and created the heavens and the earth to place us in it? And the second question I want you to ask yourself is, why are you waiting? You see, some things you shouldn't be put off. You should never gamble with your life. But the Bible says that our lives are like vapor. They could be here one second, gone the next. The tomorrow is promised to no one. Now I pray and hope that the Lord tarries. We all see a beautiful tomorrow. But that's not a promise. You seize the day that you're in and you make the best and most of it. And you get back up again tomorrow if God decides to give it to us and we, and we do it again. And so I'm going to ask you just in a moment, if you never prayed a prayer like we're about the prayer, you have prayed a prayer like this and your life isn't really reflecting that decision, then this is your opportunity to make it stick, make it count. What a beautiful day to mark on your eternal calendar that on Resurrection Sunday of 2024, you said yes or recommitted a yes to Jesus and you've never looked back since. So in just a moment, I'm going to count to three and when I do, if that's you, and you want to say yes to Jesus, you want to allow him into your life. You see, he says, behold, I stand at the door of your heart and I knock and if you would just open that door, I'll come in. I'll live in you. I'll, I'll be friends with you. I'll do life with you. He is the one that can repair the breach, fill the emptiness, chase out the darkness, and give you a real relationship with our Creator, our Father in Heaven. 
So when I count to three, if that's you and you want to say yes or recommit that yes, I want you to simply just slip your hand up nice and high in the air. We're going to pray a prayer with you right there where you sit. And all your hand is is a point of contact. You see, it says that we must confess our sin. We must confess our belief in Jesus before others. And then we will be redeemed. So if that's you on three, get it ready. Without fear, without worry, without delay. One, two, three. Come on, shoot them up nice and high. Hands are going up all over the room. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. So many hands. So many hands. Wow. So, so amazing. So honored to, to be this. Is there any more? Just you're waiting. You're, you're a little bit hesitant. You're a little bit nervous. Just, just shoot it up right now. There it is. There it is. There it is. For all of you that raise that hand, just place it right on your heart. We're going to pray this prayer together. And I'm going to ask everyone here, let's join in and let's back them up. Let's be a family. Let's all say it where our own two ears can hear it. And I am believing by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will experience a resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Come and fill your heart. And that emptiness is going to be completely filled from this day forward. Let's say it together. Say, Jesus, I believe in you. You are the Son of God. You gave your life for me. Now I give my life to you. Forgive me for every sin, every mistake I've ever made. Give me a fresh start, a new beginning. From this day forward, I dedicate my life to you. Send to me your Holy Spirit to live in me, to guide me, to help me. Jesus, I receive you now. Amen. Can we congratulate those folks that have made that their decision? So proud of you. So honored to get to do this with you. Big, big moment in your life. And Daniel's going to be coming in just a second to give you guys some information on how to take some next steps. Before he does that, I just want to speak a blessing over all of your lives. If you could just extend a hand towards me as I extend my hand towards you. Father, I thank you for each and every single one that is here. For all that are under the sound of my voice, for the children that are in the rooms and the buildings next door. God, over those that are watching online. Father, I speak the blessing that you have already commanded upon their life. Father, I pray that the resurrection power of Jesus will be stirred and fanned into flame today. I pray for faith to rise. I pray today for each and every one to walk out stronger, better than they came in. I pray that you would keep that fan being flamed into more in their lives and each and every day. I bless them, Father. I bless their lives. I bless their children. I bless their marriages, God. I bless their family, their finances, and their future. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you all. See you out in the lobby just a moment. Come on, church. Can you help me thank Pastor Chris for that message today? Resurrection power. So good. And hey, if you just prayed that prayer with him a minute ago, saying yes to Jesus, or if this is the first time you're with us here at Cedar Ridge, I would love to encourage you to grab that Connect card in the seat pocket in front of you or behind you. And take a moment. You can scan that QR code. You can flip it around and, and look at the back and fill it out manually and drop it in the giving boxes when you leave today. What we would love to do is just to send you a letter and congratulate you on your decision today but also give you some information how to continue your journey and take your next steps with God. Because you see, this is just the beginning. And we would love to be that church to help empower you to continue that relationship with God. Every single week here at Cedar Reach, we have something we call our next steps classes. You can come back already next Sunday and start that journey that, that, that you can get to know the church and God a little bit better. We get a chance to get to know you a little bit more. So you can fill that in. I promise you we're not going to knock on your door. We're not going to show up at your house or do anything weird. We just want to send you that letter and, and congratulate you and empower you. And, and if this is the first time you're with us today as well, I want you to know we have a gift in the lobby for you. So don't leave without walking 
through our Connect Center and grab a gift. Just to say we're so happy you came to celebrate Easter with us today. And on your, your chairs too, there's a little square card. And it's just a sneak peek of what's coming up in the near future. We want you to know we, we, we believe in your journey with God and for your family's journey with God. So we have things for your children and we have weekly services for teenagers here at Cedar Reach. And we have breakthrough services coming up. We have water baptisms coming up. We have camps this summer for your kids, for your teenagers. There's so much more in life with God for you and your family as well. So grab that card to read more about it. And at this point of today's service, we're going we're gonna to continue to worship God with generosity and with giving. It's one of the ways we can worship God in the Bible. Here in our church family, we believe every word the Bible says about being generous and giving to the kingdom of God. We believe God has a perfect plan for us when it comes to our finances and we trust Him in that plan. We believe what? When the Bible says that when we give into His kingdom, that He will bless us. But we also know what the Bible says, that we don't give out of pressure from people. So I'm not here to put any pressure on you to give at all. Your giving, the Bible says, is between you and God. And all He's asking is that you pray and ask in your heart what God wants you to do. And then you can step out with a cheerful heart and give with a cheerful heart in faith. And that is between you and God. So in a moment, I'm going to give you an opportunity to pray to God and ask Him, what your step is when it comes to giving. But I want you to know that thanks to your generosity, we are, we are seeing lives change. So, so I want to thank you for being a generous church. Maybe you don't know this, but every single month, because of your generosity, we are feeding over a thousand people locally here in the greater Austin region through Willowver City. Thank you so much. Thanks to your generosity, we have now started a construction of a new church building six miles from here. And guess what? We need the room. We need room for more people, and thanks to your generosity, we are reaching a city for Jesus. You're going to see a quick testimony video here in just a minute, but thank you. So when we pray and you hear from God, what you, He wants you to do, you can step out, and in many ways you can give. You can text any dollar amount to 84321. You can give on the app online. You can give manually in the giving boxes by the, room, uh, the, the doors when you leave the room today. But let's take a moment now and pray together. Father God, we thank you for speaking to your church today, for to your people today. And we open our hearts to hear you, God. And as you're speaking and, and we're asking what you want us to do, we step out in cheerfulness and faith today, God. And, and I pray that blessing you promised over every cheerful giver giving today or have been given this past week. God, thank you for your blessing in our life. And we pray, God, for that blessing upon the gift that is coming in today. May it multiply so more people can be reached here in the greater Austin region and across the nations, God, with your love, with your compassion, with your goodness and your kindness. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's check out the streets. Come to bring you life and life abundantly. Life that will overflow in every area of your life. Life that will overflow into your children's life. Let's congratulate those folks that have made that their decision. Come on, church family. Isn't it wonderful to see those smiles, the faces of the children, but also all the lives transformed. Thank you so much for being a church, making a difference wherever we go. So proud to belong to this church family. If you have a prayer request, as we dismiss here in a minute, you don't have to leave, but come up front and join our prayer partners. We would love to pray for you and pray with you for God's miracle to take place in your life before you leave. And one last time today, thank you so much for joining us for our Easter services here at Cedar Reach Church. May you have a blessed day and a blessed week. And welcome back next week. <laughs>